Yeah, it's kind of a random video today. I'm on a property that uh, they want to get rid of some of these trailers and trash. You see this old gooseneck camper. You want to get rid of that. This one. So uh, kind of just a friend and I'm going to help her out using the John Deere. Try to rip off this aluminum and yeah, see what it takes to dismantle one of these and how much value is in the scrap. Uh, it's a shame because this nice old aluminum paling is pretty thick and in, in decent shape And I'm sure there's somebody out there that would pay good money for that or needs that for for patchwork on an existing camper uh, There's also a, a couple of boat projects possible here There's this trailer right here, too And then in another video gonna be doing a wheel run on this cat 977 that's been sitting for 37 years But anyway, let's get started on this one see what's involved. She's gonna be helping out a little bit, too and again, it might make more sense to zip all these screws out and do it, but let's just uh, start pushing stuff and see what works. While a mini excavator would be much nicer to have, we got the little John Deere 2305. sitting flat again and my general thoughts right now are it's probably worthwhile to just zip all the screws out when you're doing one of these jobs because as you can see a lot of time when I grab the aluminum it wants to just lift the whole wall up especially around the doors and uh, frames but you know some of this especially the newer ones are so thin you can just rip them right out look at that fresh paint from 19 probably 1950 that's beautiful oh yeah these are true two by four walls too you don't see that a lot in campers This wants to come off, a lot of it don't.
there was so much stuff in here uh, dumpsters on the way for tomorrow but I'm afraid to touch it with the tractor anymore just because of this wind every time you bump it it loosens it up and then the, the winds just whipping stuff so I think uh, we'll try and solve all some of these in pieces and get them off plan keeps getting adjusted here but we're gonna now load up all the aluminum that we have and I'm not gonna waste my time taking these screws out but I have a feeling at the scrap yard they're gonna give us probably less than half of what aluminum's worth because of that and we'll slap together a load and see what we got Vicky is got some, some work ethic for sure. Look at this, this lady. Hungarian background, right? Never say a woman can't do it. Never say a woman can't do it. <laughs> it is windy today. make clear path through here Call that a scrap load kind of deviated from the original plan we'll have to take care of that frame another day again with the wind just not making sense and we only got one flat tire i was expecting more one so far we'll see it's next morning time to go dump a load and see how much money we got on the trailer
Oh, thumbs up. That's a bad. Look at this guy's front axle on this dump truck. I don't know if you can see that up there. <laughs> it's got a full load too. That thing is cocked. Here's what we ended up at the scrapyard. Had 1,100 pounds of light iron. $15.75 a hundred pounds, which is the most I've ever seen. 173 bucks. And then 180 pounds of sheet aluminum at 59 cents a pound, $106. So total of 279, which we divvied up amongst uh, the two of us. However, she hooked me up with some sweet uh, metal, well, actually, I got some fiberglass C channel, which is super heavy duty. Don't know what that's from, but I'll definitely find something to use that for the future. And then these heavy duty galvanized C channel sections that I don't know what project these, these were from. Uh, almost looks like used for a bridge or something, but these, I'm like, these can't go to the scrapyard. I will, I will use them on some kind of project, kind of aluminum steps, some stainless steel, and some other galvanized there. Also, some nice chains. A Billy Goat Quiet Blow, a John Deere 828D snow blower, nice condition, and then this little Ryobi pressure washer. So definitely some value here, and uh, see if some of these run. I'm out here playing with Gus. He's oh, turbo ran away. His turbo's starting to get used to him, but he's like, I don't want this dog in my backyard. You guys haven't met him yet. Actually, I guess you guys haven't, because he's uh, his first video he'll be in, I think, was the Bronco video. Out lounging in the sun, eating some grass. Stop eating that. What's wrong with you? Now, come on, I see you make it upstairs. Come on. Oh, oh, almost. Come on, you got it. You got it, buddy. There he is. Got a good, strong little pups. Let's start on this old Billy Goat. Very heavy duty, 10 horsepower overhead valve. Probably not the original engine. It's got a Briggs & Stratton 1450 industrial. The, uh, oh, the muffler's just duct taped on there. And the fuel tank is empty. See a little bit of water in there. Smells like maybe five, 10 years old. The oil level, it's up to level. It's got clean oil and compression turns over decent compression uh let's the carburetor uh, moves the mechanisms move and fuel petcock moves let's let's pour some gas in it and see if it starts Yeah, blows a ton of air. However, as you can see, it's also blowing oil out the exhaust. So she's got an oil burning problem. Maybe it'll burn off, maybe not. Needs a little work. I think I could probably get 50 bucks for this. These are expensive units, well over $1,000. See them selling used for around 500 on Marketplace. I put it up for 250. I'll let you know right here how much it sold for. Now on to the Ryobi 2900 PSI pressure washer. It's got gas. Oh, that actually smells fine. And this should fire right up. Let's double check the oil level. some pump saver in there and this is a keeper and now onto the John Deere tires need to be reseated that one looks like it's still seated a little lube on that that doesn't feel like it's doing anything uh, but the controls seem to operate this one's missing missing the cable it's broken the gas tank is bone dry oil up to level carburetor controls work choke doesn't seized up it's got a key it's in there nice i never get keys and we got compression the tines are in incredible condition it's got a little gearbox look you can check the oil level on that looks like maybe it's missing a scraper down here if you can see that maybe something bolts on there but this looks like it has very very low hours this has got the little jiggle valve on the bottom of the carb so you can drain out um, the old fuel, let's see what's in there. It smells really old and I'm not getting any new fuel in to the carb. I love on small engines how the carb's always so easy to get to. I hate when they cover them up though and it's like you gotta take stuff off to get to the bowl. Oh, there it goes. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, float is just completely seized up, and here comes the gas now. Now I gotta turn the fuel off. Come on, baby. Here's a look at the bowl. A little sludged up, and then the main jet is just completely packed rock solid. So uh, it should flow into the side here, and then come out the middle, and then you have adjustment screw on the bottom. And there's a look inside. Float is stuck but I can push it up. I gave her the old five minute spit shine revival. Should fire right up with the car back on. Just gotta get that choke unseized too. Shoot some PB down in there. might be seized up. We're gonna call that a very solid runner. So all that aluminum corrosion, or what is that, sand? I'm not sure, it all blew out uh, from here when it got the fan blowing across the cylinder head. Just need to pull the carb, fix, uh, address that linkage issue, this cable, but this is a nice piece and geez, I don't know, I might, I might hold on to this one. This tire pumped up just fine. This one we need the bead seeder tank to, to seal that or the starter fluid trick, but you see, it's got all that water in it, so I'll pull this off at work tomorrow and just uh, reseal that, clean it out. Oh, oh look at that. It's got a, an open differential. I wondered what that little pin is. It's so if you're on a driveway and you don't want to have to fight with turning it, you leave this popped out and then it's an open diff. That, I'm definitely keeping this unit. This is way better than what I have. Look at that, fits perfect in there. Dueling snowblowers. Last but not least, he's repairing the tractor tire. Found that little stab hole right here. Let me just uh, shove a plug in that for now. Call it a day. <laughs> Certainly not as good as a patch, but that'll hold. We're gonna go back and try to make a little bit more money. I'm gonna put the sides on the trailer. I'm pretty sure I can find a buyer for these. They're eight inch thick PVC SDR 35. Been sitting out in the sun, but I stepped on a little flexible still. Date code 2013. Uh, let's see if we can, I don't know, 150 bucks, 200 bucks. Some of these are really heavy, full of dirt and a couple shattered ends, which, you know, these come with rubber gaskets in them that they're supposed to seal and those are dry rotted. However, somebody, you, know, you can couple these together, make it work for sure. 30 minutes later, I've already got a buyer lined up for these. Gave them a killer price uh, and told them, you know, they've been sitting out in the sun, but he's using it for a home drainage project. So great, awesome to see it going back to use instead of to a trash pile somewhere. Off one trailer, on to the next, to their happy new home. And at this point in the video, you might be wondering, what are you gonna do with that huge mess you created? Well, I did the, the smart thing and listed this steel frame on Facebook for free to the guy who will come clean this mess up and throw it inside of a dumpster. She's got a, a deal worked out for a bunch of dumpsters for cleaning this whole property up. So he's on the way now and hopefully we can get that knocked out. The best part is he's gonna be using this trailer frame for a project instead of bringing it to the scrap yard because he's a fabricator and well, you guys know the prices of steel. So it's awesome to see this old USA steel being put back to use. And for the gooseneck, I was still thinking about keeping this one because I like that it has the C frame Oh, trailer the one to the left is boxed and you never know what's going on inside now, this thing's pretty sweet but i'm trying to find out what's going on with the title uh, i need a couple tires but i mean you know things are it's really not that heavy duty though you see those cross members are like skimpy this needs a lot of um, bracing to be strong this has a, a basement in the back which is kind of cool like a, a heated basement i guess under the whole trailer actually so i guess the one problem i could see is rodents getting down in there but this is a major benefit for four season camping and that, that way you can have the heater keeping that all warm under there and your tanks don't freeze and such i think this is my man pulling in now now we got the right equipment for the job heck yeah 32 foot gooseneck and skid steer
what do you think these are? 5,000 pound axles? Yeah, tires even still good. Good to go. That's balanced. Yeah. That worked out great. Perfect machine for the job. Just got to clean up a little bit of this more and compact that down. And then winch the trailer up on his trailer, which I think we might have to cut the end of it off to, you know, otherwise going to overhang a ton. Nice. That came off clean. And there we are for a final product. Had to just cut eight feet off or so. And yeah, off to a new good life of uh, being turned into a flatbed. So all the rest of these trailers, I uh, decided to hire this guy because he was willing to come out for free, strip them down just for the metal. And then he's taking the trash for way less than what it costs for a dumpster. Certainly the best way to go about it. He's also gonna try to save this frame too because it's in nice shape, two by six, rectangle tubing. All by hand though, no machinery. Probably the best way to go. It just keeps it a little bit cleaner and uh, hopefully he's able to knock out the last three here. And then we gotta get this gooseneck out of here too later, or the fifth wheel. Original PlayStation controller, look at that. It's probably worth something, right? Uh, see that first trailer took up this entire dumpster. Well, he got the first trailer done and then started the second, the, the big boy today, ripped the whole wall down and halfway done cleaning it. But for this last one, he's got his buddy towing this thing down to South Jersey. He's got a Ram 3500 Dually. And I mean, he's, I guess they'll take the glass out of the windows at least, but this is that's ballsy moving this thing that far, about an hour away. How's the JF Eggwell working? Pumping it up or what? 14.5. Is it holding it down? Yeah, it's still going. Yeah, it's working. These trailers have got one single heavy duty leaf spring, and then the other side's actually got a block of wood under there. I wonder if they did that just because somebody built a roof only on one side of this. Maybe all the weight it was leaning and they threw that block in there. He's going to take the roof off before he rolls. We gave him the, the green light to... Whoa! Oh! Whoa! You got... You're hitting the corner. <laughs> He's going to put the roof in the trash daddy first. Got a makeshift ladder over here. Check it out. How you making out, bro? Doing good. Had to get a clip of you going to town with the axe. Is that Harbor Freight Special? Harbor Freight Special. Heck yeah. I, I got a little chainsaw if you want to try it out, if that would help you out. No, no. OSHA approved right here. So my man's hacking away with the Harbor Freight Special over there. I'm thinking, let's give him this 14 inch electric chainsaw I just found. A little rusted. We'll shoot some heat glass on that though. I got the battery back up in here. This thing's a tank if you've seen the video on the EcoFlow. So we'll hook that up, see what it does. Left my rust penny over there. So we'll try some of the Multimax. Just hit it with a little oil. Tap a roux on there. Tap a roux always does the trick guys. Oh, that might be locked in there good, darn. Nope. There it is. Look at that thing. Woo! Yo, buddy. <laughs> Have at it. Cut through whatever nails you want, man. The EcoFlow Max going to work. We're here with the ultimate test. That's it, man. The bump will be electric. Look at that. With this, you're going to cut screws. Oh, cut concrete. All right, it's, a, it's a little dull, but it's burned its way through the wood. That thing is smoked, huh? Oh, well, I got a file. I got a file in my truck. If you want, if you want to sharpen it up. Tripping down the rest of this goose snack fifth wheel trailer. Get that loaded up, and then we'll tackle the ones in the back. And that is a nice frame. Look at that C-channel. Beautiful. Dude, what did you do? <laughs> what did you... I hit the wrong tank. The right one. <laughs> oh my god. In his defense, they said the tanks were pumped out. They said it was empty. I mean, listen to that. Dude, Chinesium does not sound that way. Oh, 
despite everything, that American steel held up nice. Didn't rack at all. The center's crossover's got a little twisted, but. We're gonna put some weight on the back, bring the front up, back the trailer right under it. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah keep following that. All right, let me know. Keep out, keep it far. Like a darn glove. We were getting hooked up on that jack on a steel plate, but fixed that and then <laughs> jacked up the table, got the, the pin over the front. You can't beat that. Fits like a glove. You gotta take the gate out, watch. <laughs> Come on, dude. I can't, his two by four is on the ground. <laughs> oh my God. Next on the chopping block is this 16 foot Mastercraft aluminum boat. This is probably worth saving, but I already have too many boats. So I'm gonna drag her on out of here. Maybe we can find a buyer. I believe it's a Mastercraft just because it says that on the hubcaps. I don't see it anywhere on the boat, but it does seem really high quality. Like the ratchet straps are built into the frame and it's got a single leaf springs uh, going across. Pretty intricate suspension with rollers on it too. I mean, check out this trailer. It's actually not in bad shape, but you know, all the wood's rotted out so the, the whole transom would need the wood replaced as a tree. <laughs> that, was, that was a big tree growing in here. Um, but check, check it out. Like, the, Penn Warner Club. This is just fully abandoned. I mean, whoever owned it is can't contact him and doesn't want it. And clearly, it's been sitting for, oh geez, I guess since 1994. There we These two trailers she wants gone to. Somebody's taking this one. Uh, but this, she said she wants scrapped. And I don't know, that seems... Oh, look, that might actually be a little tweaked. Looks... The frame could be bent a little bit. Yeah, look at the I-beams. And then this trailer, which has aluminum sides. Very heavy duty. Seems dry in here. Like, this roof has never leaked. And you got this mostly emptied out now. Oh, I guess it did leak at one point. <laughs> He's got a hole in it. Well, this would probably be a scrap one too. I guess we could drag this out, but I don't have a machine big enough. And nobody's gonna want to tow this. Yeah. He's got one of these XC 6.0 batteries. Let's see if that makes a difference how it sounds. Oh my God, what a difference. It's way more powerful. You guys can see in the video that this plate's popping because it's missing the arbor ring in there. So it, it's just, I mean, it cut, but it's hammering, so it's horrible for the, for the blade. It's just gonna smash it apart. You see, he seems to be missing a, a piece in here and it's just hammering his brand new blade apart. This side's perfectly new and that side's destroyed.
got to cut the axles out now. And run home, get the trailer. And we got Stacy over here with his homemade bead breaker. Check out this jig. <laughs> that works pretty good or what? Pretty much, yeah. Heck yeah. You build that yourself or what? This, this is like old tire changer. Okay. Then this is off the truck frame I cut up one time, so just put the metal together. Nice. Yep. That'll work. He's, uh, he's just breaking these all down and cutting the steel out of them. Yep. So that way, you scrap, you know, get rid of the tires and then scrap the steel. A lot of work, man. Uh huh. That's <laughs> something to do. Yeah, heck yeah. Keeps me occupied. This is, I think I showed this earlier in the video. This one was rubber filled oh, too. Yeah. Never seen that before. Nope. Yeah, that's crazy. You don't bend your fork. I don't think it will. It's got it. Yeah, that's a lot of stress on the end of your fork, though, man. Holy smokes! I mean, I probably wouldn't do that. That's my, you know. Good. Fork still straight. Tomahawk fork for the win. Made in USA. Top notch quality. Well, that's a that's a nice scrap load if I ever seen one. Good way to break your axle on the trailer too, but it shouldn't be overweight, I don't think. For this saw, I went home in my spacer's drawer, got this one, sanded it down a little bit. I'm gonna see if this fixes the situation on this one. That is a press fit in there. Let's see if this works. I'll call that fixed. It's been much truer now. Sweet. gonna hopefully be turned into an overhead crane trolley in, a, in his shop. A little bent, if you can see that, but it's not bad. Good. Good. Gotta get some of those speed binders. I see Camerata's got with the drill attachment. More scrap we can throw on top of here. The one thing about these, you can't get out of the door unless you put your, your load all the way down uh, or all the way up, but otherwise you can't open the door. Not too bad, $730 at 4,600 pounds. I'll take it. Finally back to this trailer. We got everything kind of hazardous out of there and this tree's clearly dead. I'm thinking let's try it. Is so fun opening this like a can opener that's it's really thick aluminum though i mean this stuff is it was actually struggling but i figured i could maybe push these boards off which that worked that worked well
couple ideas now. We're thinking about running the chain all the way up and back and then holding it down to strip all the aluminum, you know, rip the bottom. No shortage of chain here. Seems legit. I think it uh, goes with that saying, but don't do this at home. Probably not that safe. Well, that's one way to break a chain in, strip the coating off. And man, that got really hot pulling through the aluminum. Not exactly what we were going for, but you know. Just chain wrap through on this side again, three in the way, cut most of the structural members. Let's give it another yank. <laughs> oh man. Tell me this trailer wasn't built well. Cut the steel corners out and then the rest is all aluminum. I can't believe how well these torch blades hold up. This is one of the beat ones that we were using the other day and he tossed it because it wasn't cutting steel as good. I've been just hacking through this aluminum. I bet you after cutting the rest of this trailer up, it'll still be a good blade. I'm trying to rip these rails off because the nuts are diseased on the other side, but definitely gonna have to cut a few first.
in the cash in this aluminum. I'm hoping, oh geez, hoping at least 500 bucks. Twelve hundred and twenty pounds of sheet aluminum at only fifty-six cents a pound. I should have went over to Trenton there. I think a little bit more than that, uh, but total uh, seven hundred and sixty-three dollars. Back here today, going to get the rest of the scrap loaded up on the trailer, and then Tom's coming for these pieces. He's got a project in mind for these I beams the trailer he's doing. But uh, I got the three wheeler here, the ATC two hundred, and going to go do a little exploring. One of the uh, property owners was telling me there's like some eight foot pipe back here. Or, I don't know, I figured we go check it out and see if we can see what we can find and come back later and we'll load the rest of this up and get everything cleaned up. It's kind of marshy back here, so hopefully I don't get stuck, but somewhat of a trail. Oh, look at that concrete piling or whatever that is. Got some bricks mixed in too. Uh, this is looking a little dicey. Hmm. I guess we'll just push on through. For the wind, I think there's a creek somewhere back here too. Now hopefully we don't run right into that. Oh, it's like stumps. I'm running over. This thing is just motoring over these huge stumps. I got strung up a little bit by some vines, but she she blazed the trail through, no problem. Right, here is the the stream I'm talking about. You can see they kind of came back here and. Mark this off somebody there, whoever's buying this property next. That loops around the back of the property, comes through here. And apparently there's some kind of tunnel or something over here they were saying at the end of it. Um, oh, this is a hunting tent right here. I guess this would be a good hunting spot. And more tape markings. That little stream kind of comes around here. It looks pretty nasty. And deadheads over here, it looks like. Oh, yeah, it's just all kind of marsh back here. Somebody dumped a bunch of more tires here. You know, it really sucks that government agencies won't, you know, townships won't take tires because then people just pull up on the side of the road and dump them out. The messed up part is somebody probably charged to get rid of these tires and then they just, you know, just illegally dump them. I found it. Here's the pipe the guy must have been talking about. So I followed the creek going that way and it gets all nasty. But it actually branches off and well, geez, I guess we probably could. some rocks in here but hopefully this is not that soft oh yeah now he said he drove a jeep through this i i don't know about that but the three-wheeler will definitely fit let's go i suppose the dauntless death trap might fit through this with the top down well, we're about halfway on the tires Not that big either. We swampy over here though. Oh no, oh no. I'm getting deeper. I'm a little stuck right here, but I'll be able to get out. And it just leads to this little drainage area and then back out that way, probably to the canal, I would assume. That's what the beauty about these little three wheelers is you don't have a winch, but it's light enough where you can motor it and drag it. Even with the tires caked up, it's no problem. On slopes like this, they want to roll over. You gotta compensate. Back through we go. Fun. Head back down. Final load's a pretty fat one. Should be uh, hopefully about 4,000 pounds or so also. <laughs> yeah. Get it. That's beautiful. 
video of the thing. Thanks, man. They gave us number one heavy unprepped at 5,000 net uh, with a 300 pound wood deduction. And I, well, that was 800 bucks. And then I had one catalytic converter to some copper and brass, $996. And I think we'll wrap this video up now. Obviously a little different from what I normally do, but hopefully you guys still found it interesting. Uh, but we got these two trailers knocked out and everything else that's in this video, I don't even remember. I'm just dragging a few items up front now, the paints and stuff to get properly dispose of those. Got a guy that's coming to take all this wood and all this to throw in the dumpster. Uh, there's, there is gonna be a little bit more scrapping, like I found, well, this piece right here, and then I found buried in the woods, a giant eye beam back here. Uh, I don't know what that's off of, but it's pretty long and heavy, so I'll come back and get hats and scraps at an all time high. And uh, who knows, maybe there'll be a part two on this, cause they're, expressing interest with uh, me getting rid of all the tires and the, the trailers up front breaking those down. So there, there might be more going on here, but the price has got to be right. And so far it's been well worth it and a, a very fun adventure. What did we start with? Uh, just helping a lady out, breaking down a trailer to see how it worked out. And it morphed into this, this giant thing. And I got a couple guys working with me now too. Met some great new friends. Uh, Stacy's the man, got his number. Can't wait to hang out with him again once he's out of here. And it's been, like I said, a very fun adventure. Sorry if the wind's blowing on the mic. It's, got, it's like winter time again. Anyway, so thanks so much for tuning in. If you did watch this video, any feedback down below, hugely appreciate it. If you wanna see more of this kind of thing, you know, let me know and maybe there'll be a part two on this. So till next time, no nonsense, no how. And I do hope to see you again.